Along President Obama's tour today, he stopped by for a demonstration of an offshore renewable energy system, O-R-E-S, where excess power from a wind turbine pumps water out of a, a storage volume anchored to a seabed. So it lets offshore power generation, um, offshore power be generated when the wind's not blowing and power is needed. Uh, joining us for more now on this project and other things happening at MIT in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is MIT professor Andrew Slocum, self-described gizmologist. Thanks for joining us, Professor. Howdy. It's so, Alex Slocum here from MIT saying hi. <laughs> Tell us, how was today's visit? Ever met a president before? I have not until today. And uh, was how impressed warm, was he with the technology up there? Wonderful and really smart. This man gets it. Wow. Tell me about, uh, about what you showed him. You demonstrated this uh, Aura system, wind turbines anchored to the seabed that can actually store energy. So this is a system I've been working on for a few years. Uh, I'll show you here with the, 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 the toys. So a fr uh, colleague and friend, Pres Professor Sklavonis, is working on how to make the windmill float. And in deep water, you see the electric cable comes down to the seafloor. And here I have a simulated seafloor. And in the top here, you'd have a pumped hydro system. So when, you when the wind is blowing and you have excess power, you're <laughs> sucking the water out of this volume and create a vacuum and sending power to shore. When the wind stops blowing and you need to still keep the power flowing, the water <laughs> flows back through the pump and backwards and generates power to send to shore. This is done now with lakes on tops of mountains. It's called a pumped hydro system, very efficient. The hardware is known and exists. We've just turned everything upside down and putting a lake on the bottom of the ocean. And the technology for making these structures and embedding them in the sand so they don't come out is used now uh, in the offshore structures world. These are uh, called suction anchors, and they were used to hold floating platforms in place, like tension leg platforms. Wow, this is, this is pretty cool. You know, they told me that you would actually be bringing a wind turbine on to, to show us, and I didn't believe it, but now, now I do. Um, of course, the big, the, big, uh, the big thing for technologies like this is bringing them to scale. Storage, of course, is the key enabling technology for these, you know, intermittents like wind. So tell me about, um, you know, what starts at a university, how, what, what happens to it on its, uh, on its road to the real world, and how ready is technology like this one? Like how, how new is it? Okay, so the nice thing about this particular technology is we know how to do it now when the parts exist because the pumped hydro, in other words, the pump generator sets, you can buy now for your lakes on tops of mountains. The pumps and generator technology for putting 1,000 feet under the sea actually exists and is used all the time for subsea production platforms by the oil industry. So all that exists. The large structures you would need you would need a sphere about 32, 33 meters in diameter, 300 meters below the surface of the ocean. So that's off our continental shelf right here. Uh, would store about 10 megawatt hours of electricity. The cost to do all this, including tugging this thing out, sinking it down, the whole, uh, the whole thing would be about two to three hundred dollars per kilowatt hour, we estimate, when these things are, are finally made in volume. So we could start ramping up fairly quickly in doing this. You know, obviously we want to build little system, bigger system, and then the final system in a ramp up of, you know, two, three, four years. But uh, there's no new materials, there's no new bio growth factors, nothing like that required. And the really cool thing is, if you take an area about mm, 100 miles by 500 miles, which is very much, say, 30 to 50 miles off the New England coast, put some Doppler radon on there, so when the migratory birds come around, you turn the windmills off, but you still got your energy being produced because you got storage until the little birdies fly by. Uh, you could generate about a third of all the electricity that's needed in the United States. That's about 500 gigawatts. That, that could be done. The, the offshore New England could be the new Middle East of the world. Is there interest uh, coming from corporations or anywhere else to, to bring this to a larger scale? Well, we've talked to some people. This is all pretty, pretty new. It's all evolved very fast. So uh, we're hoping there should be. Um, it's very easy to do, I think. I, I don't see any uh, major barriers, just uh, the will and the organization to start this large-scale effort. 
Are there other technologies going on there? And I just wanted to ask about solar, too, if you could speak to it, um, about the same issue of storage capacity, uh, other universities or other projects there at MIT? Part of my research is also on solar storage. Uh, I didn't cover that with the president. I, most people in solar are working on better solar cells uh, and better engines for the generation. Not too many people are working on storage. Uh, I think everyone agrees that storage probably is the key to make this thing happen. And uh, we probably don't have the time to go into to how you would store the solar power. But I think we can also work that out very nicely. And that is something, for example, that would be very useful in the southwest United States. Right. Well, it is uh, fascinating stuff you have there. Your motto, Professor, is science doesn't have to be boring. And you certainly have shown that uh, to us today. Professor Alex Slocum at MIT, thank you so much. Toodles. Have a nice day. <laughs> we appreciate it.